and I was training on just a regular session. Nathan was training with Roth on that session. I was like, wow. why am I <laughs> on the same session as Nathan Chen? Do you guys think that Yuzu is going to keep skating past this year? Yuzu will try to attempt a quad axle again at Worlds. The south, because there was a huge, massive hole in the ice. Crazy how in Mexico, he doesn't have a lot of these resources. He gives like this hip action in the middle. My younger brother also skates and it was in France and Adam was also there. Skating moms kind of talk on the side and <laughs> I heard from my mom. <laughs> that team. <laughs> episode is what happened at the Beijing 2020 Winter Olympic figure skating men's event. So of course we can start out with Americans as we have our gold medal champion Nathan Chen. Of course we can not talk about him um, because he had pretty much uh, a clean skate. He popped a flip coming out of the Euler in one of his combos, but he did hit a personal best for a season and he conquered the ghosts of his Olympic past from um, the last cycle. So definitely super, super, um, you know, happy for him. You could see that if you actually watch the live stream, he actually cried an actual kiss and cry. Which is like kind of rare for him to I show know, emotions. Because right? I feel like yeah. Nathan Emotions has on that. the ice, not show emotions in general, but... Or you're just like, I don't think none of us, like, any of us know Nathan personally, so I'm sure he shows emotion in his personal life. I wouldn't see him as the type of person who would cry, so that was kind of, like, uncharacteristic. But yeah, no, no, super, super happy for him. Um, we did see a little bit of a costume change. Um, I feel like Nathan's <laughs> costumes are always the talk of the hour for the wrong, all the wrong reasons. Um, uh, we know that the, the costume that he wore in his long program or in his free program uh, to his Elton John program in at the U.S. Nationals literally looked like a bag of hot Cheetos and <laughs> now his new costume which I think is marginally better I think it's marginally better yeah. Mar right it's like marginally better but it's still like it's like it's like flaming Doritos vibes now um and it doesn't help that there was a meme that came out that showed his old yellow <laughs> costume looking like a bag of lace so that's um <laughs> that's that's what we have to say about Nathan's costume but I think the more insane thing is when we look at the point gap is um he had a 22 point lead in front of uh, second place finish or silver medalist Yuma Kamiyama from Japan. And Yuma had a freaking quad loop, but Nathan, I guess, just like has like the whole hand. Like he performed five different quads in his program and pretty much all landed cleanly, which was um, pretty, pretty insane. I think Nathan's always struck me as a very uh, strategic skater. Mm -hmm. Like he will choose and practice the elements that will allow him to perform the best or like mm. get the highest points value, which makes a lot of sense if you're in this like competitive environment and you know people are gonna make mistakes, you wanna have a higher base value. So in addition to Nathan, I really wanna talk about Jason because I think he really, really had his Olympic moment yes. in both the short yes. and the long. Yes. Um, so he stated multiple times, I believe, that he's retiring after this season. So seeing him play sixth at the Olympics with no quads, um, but also with very high PCS. I think he got the second high, highest PCS in the event on the free skate right after Nathan Chen. I think it was like less than a point or just about a point behind Nathan. Yeah, yeah, no, I think his PCS are well-deserved. I would, that's surprising. I mean, okay, surprising, but also not surprising. I did not know that Nathan had higher PCS than Jason. Yeah, it was actually by a little less than a point. Oh, wow. That's, well, that that's that's kind of surprising. And that goes again to the murky <laughs> ISU PCS judging that everyone talks about. But yeah, the uh, conflation of <laughs> skating skills with jumping skills. But yeah, no, Jason, um, we saw that, you know, this season, sometimes he would attempt his quad sow, but instead of um, you know, attempting that quad, he just decided to go for a clean skate instead. And it definitely paid off because he just executed everything like gorgeously i think his center man program is one of my favorite programs he just oh his split jumps his positions his one-handed bielman like i think it's just crazy that he placed sixth with no quads that's just beauty i don't know i kind of also think about vincent and the similarly like happy finish like good finish he could have had 
if he were able to compete. Um, but as we know, he tested positive for COVID before the individual event, and so therefore couldn't compete. And um, something that we learned that is more recent is that he's been welcomed to perform in the exhibition of the Olympics mm-hmm. after you know his quarantine is said and done and whatnot. We'll see if he stays and, and shows up for that exhibition. Hopefully so. Um, yeah. But one thing I was thinking of also, guys, is that maybe he will actually get to attend the award ceremony for the team event. Like, yeah, maybe because, the uh, medal gets upgraded. <laughs> yeah. Upgrade um, to the gold medal, perhaps? Exactly. Yeah, because of the whole Russian doping scandal that's still in the gray area right now. So, yeah. yeah so I hope that I happens. Guess, <laughs> I guess silver, silver lining. So fingers crossed for Vincent that he can at least attend his own team medal ceremony because it would definitely be a shame if he had a, you know, miss the ceremony in his room. I know. And I'm just, I'm worried for him because like, did you guys see that video of that other athlete that went viral? Like she's not in figure skating, but like she, she, I think she tested positive for COVID and then she ended up being like quarantined, but then released from quarantine because of the quarantine conditions. So uh, anyways. Oh, what? The quarantine yeah. conditions were like bad or something? Or I don't know, she just like released a video like calling for help or something. Um, but yeah, no, it was like really scary. So I really hope that, you know, oh, yikes. I, I really hope Vincent's doing okay because it must yeah. be tough with like, of course, you guys probably saw his video. Um, yeah, so just hopefully he's doing okay. My heart goes out to him because I love Vincent. Moving on from the Americans, let's talk the Japanese men, which pretty much just all killed it um so i guess we can start the conversation off with silver medalist yuma kagiyama which coming out of this olympics is probably one of my new favorite skaters because i just personally think he is so so freaking adorable and it's so interesting because when you look at the men's podium for this year there is a 20 point lead between gold and silver and silver from bronze so yuma was around 20 points ahead of shoma Um, due to Shoma making some mistakes and to free. Uh, So, of course, Yuma uh, attempted his quad loop again, similar to the team event, um, and the flow was just incredible. And I think, again, Yuma just laid down a solid short program, solid free program. Um, And it's crazy because he's he never competed at the Olympics before, and he's so young, which is which just makes it all the more impressive that he's able to handle all that mental pressure and not having any Olympic experience at all. As we know that even Nathan Chen last Olympics was his first Olympics for him. And of course you can see how that pressure has affected him. So seeing Yuma really conquer that and get a silver medal in the first go was um, absolutely um, amazing. And we see that after his free skate, he does like a little <laughs> high fi handshake with his dad in the kiss and cry, um, who he's coached by. And it's just absolutely, absolutely adorable. Yeah, definitely very precious. Um, I think the first time most of the world started paying attention to Yuma was at Worlds last year, um, where he won the mm-hmm. silver medal, I believe. Yeah. Silver, yeah, where he won the silver medal. And I think since then, he's improved so much in the short 11 months since then. Um, I remember at the beginning of the season, we talked about this a little before, but his short program, a lot of people would say that he doesn't really have facial expressions. He's not that expressive as a skater. But I think in his short program at the Olympics individual event, you could really see that he was putting a lot of effort into sometimes even mouthing the lyrics of the song and Mm -hmm. kind of just emoting through his face and not just doing the moves with his body. Let's also talk a bit about Shoma because I was super happy to see him um, Mm -hmm. get a bronze medal here. A really, I think, deserved one, even though he did not have his best free at all. Um, I think he popped uh, into a single and also fell and kind of had some shaky landings as well on some of his quads. But all in all, you know, he put together enough to still be in that bronze medal position um, over Yuzuru, which we'll get to. But um, I think it was just a little bit, you know, maybe sad for him personally because he's been practicing so well here and looked so solid in the team event short program. So to not show um, that same type of energy in his individual free is probably disappointing. However, I think, honestly, even if he did a clean skate or much closer to a clean skate, I don't think that he would have beaten Yuma. So 
all in all, placement wise, I don't think it would have been much different, but for mm-hmm. his personal like uh, success and journey, hopefully he'll be able to also go to Worlds and put out a better free skate. I think more of the conversation is not the point gap between Yuma and Shoma, but more the point gap between Shoma and Yuzu. Right? If Yuzu has landed that quad style cow that he popped in the short, then the point gap between him and Shoma would have been quite close if Shoma skated clean in the free. Yeah, definitely. Let's actually talk about that pop in the short program from Yuzu. Mm-hmm. I think that was a pretty uncharacteristic pop mm-hmm. from him because we usually see that Yuzu is a short program skater and excels in a short. Yes. Um, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I was expecting that oh, to happen I this time. I love Yuzu. I feel like Yuzu is like literally the love of my life. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunate that this Olympic cycle we didn't get to see the reigning poos because obviously due to freaking COVID restrictions, I don't think there was one audience, two people, like you, you there was no like throwaways like or whatever the mm-hmm. hell they call them is allowed. But yeah, yeah, back to the convo about the pop. Yeah, definitely. So when we look at the pop afterwards, um, Yuzu was credited in the mix zone saying that he actually popped the sow because there was a huge, massive hole in the ice and his blade went right into it. And that kind of just threw him off and didn't let him get enough rotation or height for the rest of the jump. Um, So that was one factor, but also I think from several people's notes on Twitter, like Rocker Skating, they mentioned that Yuzu kept going through his quad sal entry before the short program and it seemed like maybe he was like uncomfortable with it or maybe he had was having trouble with that jump um a couple of days leading up to the competition so maybe that was also a factor what do you guys think mm-hmm. yeah i think it's i feel like it's very uncharacteristic for yuzu to um pop his quad sal in my opinion because it is an edge jump and yuzu is one of those skaters who does great on the jumps like the quad sal and the triple axel because he just has such good technique going into these edge jumps but i i was actually like really surprised i think yuzu is one of those people that i watch and he's going into his quad sal cow and i'm just typically you know chilling because i know he's probably going to land it and land it beautifully um and so this time seeing the pop like it was really quite shocking um and i would say that Perhaps if the hole is, um, you know, the hole that he mentioned is what kind of threw him off. I felt like, I think there's something to say about like an athlete's like intuition that when he knows that like something is wrong, knowing that his goal in the Olympics this year was not necessarily to, you know, get a third gold medal or anything, but rather to do that quad axle and be the first person to attempt or even attempt to land it in the free skate, I almost felt like he didn't want to risk potentially getting in, uh, getting injured on the quad sal with the, you know, misstep in the hole and not being able to compete in the free skate. I think that would have been a bigger letdown to Yuzu himself in achieving his personal goals rather than, you know, him like sticking and landing that quad sal in the risk of injuring himself yeah we also heard that he might have gotten injured in practice from doing the quad axle so maybe that also was a factor um and if that's Mm -hmm. the case hopefully he can recover quickly i think the great thing was that he still went on like nothing happened i i mean like i feel like like and you can just see the difference in the level of skating between um the people in the top category versus some of the other people in the way that they recover from a jump actually jumping around a little bit here we mentioned that yuzu popped his sal but then went on like nothing happened that kind of reminds me of uh jun huan cha's long program where he fell on his first quad and he literally bounced off the floor but then he went on and finished the rest of his long program like nothing happened so maybe that's like a Orser, Brian Orser thing, <laughs> thing. Maybe that's what's going on here. <laughs> that's so funny. Because mm-hmm. I remember we were watching with some of our friends, and one of our friends, Michelle, made a really funny comment. She was like, she was like, Orser plus Korea equals match. <laughs> 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 Which is basically um uh, Jim Wan. But I know like we're hopping around going back to Yuzu. 
that we, we, we were talking about him potentially not attempting that quad to make sure he gets that chance to at least try the quad axle. Um, we see that and when, when we went back to check the judging at the end, the quad axle looked more rotated than ever. And when we checked the scores, it was actually considered under rotated, which is a step forward from the downgrade that he got at Japanese nationals. So a downgrade um, in judging in, in figure skating is like two carats versus um, a under rotation is only one. So that's that's already a huge step forward for Yuzi, even though he, um, you know, couldn't land it. And honestly, we never really seen a clean one in practice. So... I'm not exactly surprised, and I feel like I f- almost feel like Yuzu wasn't entirely surprised either. I think he's that type of athlete that you know just really wants to push the sport forward and try something that no one else has tried. So I think that he just wanted to give that quad axle attempt on one of the biggest international stages um, at the Olympics, and I honestly think that he seemed okay with his performance like definitely in the past like we see yuzu when he skates badly he is quite hard on himself because he's such you know a perfectionist and i feel like he almost like also skates for his fans a lot um uh, which is interesting again with this olympic cycle not having an audience because i feel like yuzu is almost one of those people who thrive for the audience because he just he just loves performing and skating for people so that was another you know aspect of it but he seemed mentally okay with his performance i think he was proud of his quad axle attempt and he should very much be so but with that said what do you guys think do you guys think that um yuzu will try to attempt the quad axle again at worlds do you think will he like like how are the worlds even gonna happen like you True. never know with covid i feel like we had delta and then we thought we were fine and then omicron and then you know, who who, have, yeah. who knows what's after Omicron. But, you know, like, do you guys think, like, Yuzi will be at Worlds in the first place? Or maybe that potential injury he was talking about in his right. practice um, that he might want to take some time off and know what's the future to come for Yuzu? Yeah, I think, I think his personal headspace would be kind of leaning towards competing at Worlds and trying the quad axle again, having another shot. Because I know he said... Uh, that in the past that he doesn't want to leave the sport before being the first to land Mm. it cleanly. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's getting closer with this competition, right? Like you said, what do you guys think that he will withdraw like due to the injury or? It makes me nervous because I feel like even if he's injured, he's going to push through it. But then is his injury ever going to (laughs) recover? Because it concerns me. His like ankle injury, he's been having the same injury come back like literally every single year almost right yeah I feel like if Worlds is his last hurrah and he knows that it won't completely wreck his body forever if that's possible that's not going to be the case and that's really really scary yeah yeah do you guys think that Yuzu is gonna keep skating past this year is that Mm. even possible because he technically he is only 27 and at the Olympics we did see people in their early 30s Yep, Keegan's in his 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Brzezina. I never know how to he, say his name. Me, Miguel, Miguel, Miguel. Brzezina. <laughs> this is such a side, but I actually took a lesson from him because um, he used to coach at the rink that I skate at when I'm back home, um, mm. which is the rink that Roth works at and Nathan mm-hmm. and Raya also skates at. Um, super random aside, but <laughs> I was, I was like back home for the holidays and I was training on just a regular session. And then for some reason, Nathan was training in spins with Roth on that session. And I was like, what is happening? I was like, wow. why am I <laughs> on the same session as Nathan Chen and Mariah Bell? I was like, there's something not right with this, but no, they were just on like a general freestyle session. And I was like pretty shocked. So it was pretty insane to see <laughs> Nathan do his stuff like in person on the same ice as him because um yeah that was definitely uh intimidating I was like I'm here with like my like me little like camel sits with <laughs> and he's doing you know what that means on the same ice as Nathan and Mariah future Olympian we have oh my here. god yes. no in my fucking wildest dreams oh my god no but it's just like yeah no that 
that was just insane and that was like I also heard him like change his music um and I was like wait I thought he had different program music um but it turns out at that point he had already changed his program music but he just hasn't publicly performed it yet so I was like wow very very cool in the know in the know wow. the inside edge <laughs> ah. <laughs> skating pond not intended yes we were talking about Hanyu um potentially competing past this season I want him to be able to do what he wants to do because I know that Yuzu is that kind of athlete that you know un- un- until he achieves something he does not give up um I just hope that you know he does it in the right way and it's not an expense for his body in the long term even if that means that you know he takes like a season off but maybe like comes back next season after he feels better to attempt the quad axle because again like what we said, like he is only 27. It's not impossible, but maybe just like take a little bit of time off. And we've seen that um, with other skaters, like um, another one of my favorites, like Liza from Russia or Elizabeth. She was off the skating scene for a little while. And then now she came back with like these triple axles and she's still being healthy and doing great. So I just wish the same thing for Yuzu. About Yuzu with his um, quad axle attempts, we also should talk about Daniel Grassel with his multiple quad attempts as well. I think Daniel Grassel is like a skater that is kind of underappreciated because of his maybe not as developed PCS or skating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're divided on this podcast about how we feel about Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to point out though, he did have the fourth highest free skate score and the third highest in technical. And I, I would just say that he really does try really hard to emote and express in his programs it's just that maybe the level is not there yet but he's he, he's aware of it and he's working on it so yeah. um i think those are things to consider when we think about daniel um and also i did read somewhere online that he said in his short program he actually only includes one instead of two quads even though two quads would get him higher base value because he wanted to work more on his skating skills so we know that Daniel has that in mind. He's going to work on it. I think it'll be interesting to see him in future seasons. Maybe he can experiment with different choreographers and um, find a way to kind of give maybe a more natural like interpretation and mm-hmm. skating style. Give him a couple of years, guys. Also, be <laughs> super consistent. I think consistency is important. Other stuff you can work on. Consistency, most important. <laughs> I mean, don't like... people normally work on consistency? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I've realized when you follow like a skater who is consistent, you won't be disappointed as often. For example, like, Nathan, Nathan is very, very consistent. That's why so many people like watch his skating because they're not like, mm. oh, like he's so bad today. Oh, he's good tomorrow, you know? <laughs> I think in a way, Daniel reminds me of me. Maybe that's why I don't like him. <laughs> because what? I feel like we're both people who try so hard, but we don't end up looking good at what no, we okay, do. No, that's, that's wrong, Kathy. You know, you improved so much. You know what? I have the same faith in Daniel as I have in you. Oh, no. I have the same faith in you as I have oh, no. <laughs> I don't to say this. I have faith in both of you guys. I don't know, man. I feel like we just try hard and stay ugly. <laughs> My only thing with him is just like he does that weird head thing when he jumps where I feel like his head is almost going back. Um, it just looks really strange. It's the haircut too. Yeah. It it's, the, it's, it's the mop hair. It's the mop hair as well. <laughs> okay, but do you know who else also I think jumps kind of like that? I think Boyang Jin's yes. actually jumps kind really? of similarly. Like he tilts his yeah. head back, but you can't really see because his hair is much shorter. Oh, interesting. After, after you said that, Emma, I was looking for it in the free and I actually saw it a lot. Right? Like especially oh. like on the kind of triples where the rotation is maybe a little slower than the quads. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. But it's interesting because I thought I didn't really see it on his quad butts, which he did like absolutely amazing. I guess we could just huge. transition to him. Um, it was like incredible. So huge. I honestly thought it was kind of at least the same plane as Nathan's, if not better, honestly. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys thought the same, but um, I think with an immense amount of pressure, like he – did well he did better in the individual event than he did in the team event even though he's facing like a lot of obviously um pressure from his home country skating there so yeah I'm I'm proud of him (laughs) it was nice to see him have like a positive moment and I believe he was in the top 10 right was he ninth place I think so yeah Mm -hmm. so. so that was good 
Um, yeah, maybe he's Boyan- not done yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say Boyan's another one of the skaters who've already been in two Olympic cycles, which is mm-hmm. actually eight years. Um, wild of beating up your body and doing figure skating. So, do you guys think he's gonna continue to compete, or do you think he might retire? I'm not sure. Like, like you were saying, Kathy, he was fourth last time, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, he was really close. People forget. <laughs> yeah, like you were saying. So I, I'm i not actually sure how old he is. So maybe depending on that and depending on like if China has any other prospects for men's, you know, maybe he really does have to keep going to kind of keep pushing China's like name in men's and mm-hmm. creating a pipeline by like maybe also mentoring or like helping other younger skaters. Who knows? I think someone else that, you know, didn't really um, – make the top headlines because of the placement was um Adam Xiao Him Fa. I personally am such a big fan of his skating. <laughs> like it's just so energetic and entertaining. Like he does his Star Wars program and his footwork is absolutely fire. Like he does this aerial and you think he's gonna like fall on his head and crack his head open but okay. <laughs> he never does Him even if he looks Kevin. like he's about to both fall both of them are just like yeah. flipping all over the place it's it's the same thing with the french men they just love doing aerials <laughs> just all over the place and i just i swear he's like going faster than anyone in his footwork sequence and like giving the most energy no what's actually funny so my younger brother actually went to a like summer like skating camp Um, because my brother also my younger brother also skates and it was in france and adam was also there no way Um, yeah they're taking lessons from the same like choreographer because i think adam was like visiting to get his program choreographed this was like three almost four years ago oh my god Um, but as you know like skating moms kind of talk on the side and (laughs) i heard from my mom (laughs) that tea tea from the asian to real Apparently my mom said that his mom said he just really, really loved skating and Aww. like no matter Aww. what, that was what he was like went back to and he just really loves the like all aspects, the skating, the jumping, like all of that stuff. So oh, I feel like you could see that in his face when he was done his program and he got off the ice and saw his coach. By the way, I, I kind of love the energy his coach gives. Mm-hmm. But as an aside, but he was just like smiling from ear to ear, like just seeming like he really enjoyed the experience and the performance. And so like with what you're saying, Emma, like confirming that feeling, I feel like he's gonna mm-hmm. hopefully stay around for a while and get better and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The French coach looks like honestly really nice. I was like, I kind of want to be his friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that that footwork was like fire, fucking fire as shit. And I would say that um, it kind of like he kind of gives me like a little bit of like Jimmy Ma vibes. If you guys remember, like <laughs> oh, what if yes. right like. It's these, like, hyper-energetic Asian boys, I feel like. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, no, definitely reminds me of that time Jimmy Ma went viral. And honestly, like, a smidge of, like, kind of that energy Nathan Chen was trying to bring in his, like, Rocket Man um, kind of, like, Mm. rap step sequence sequence. portion. Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting to see that a lot of the men in this field are trying kind of, you know kind of this new music style out which is quite interesting and for adam he just absolutely killed it all right so along the lines of talking about underrated skater i need to talk about donovan carrillo i absolutely love him you guys probably seen him all over youtube because um nbc did like coverage on him and that's the great thing about the olympics is it does put certain skaters on the forefront more um and deservingly so he's the first man in 30 years 30 to rep mexico in the olympics and he's actually the first mexican man to ever enter the free skate um so if you're not familiar with skating um the 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 short program there's actually 30 entries uh from countries and only 24 of those advance to the free skate so when i was waiting to see like the green cue come up of who made it into the free skate. I was really, really crossing my fingers because Mex- Mexico has never sent anyone in men's into the free skate and Donovan made the cut, which is absolutely awesome. And if you guys haven't watched this documentary, it's it's just crazy how in Mexico he doesn't have a lot of these resources to train. He literally goes to a rink in a public mall and mm. has to train on a public session yeah. with like little kids and like imagine like 
also in his short program, he throws down like a beautiful quad toe. Like I just cannot yeah. imagine training a quad toe on a fucking public session. Yeah, like exactly. I just think that's so crazy. And that's something just, I think not just skating in the U S but skating around the world is that we just need more diversity in skating. And that's such a big problem. Like also here in the U S. Um, so I was just so glad to see him kind of be the face of that diversity in skating. And I honestly loved his like program music choices um, because they were all like Latin inspired music. And I love how in both of his programs in the short and the free, he gives like this hip action in the middle. And I love it because it's just so like, uh, it's just so smooth. And I feel like he has so much potential and he is so young um and i am a huge fan and i'm sure like the world is now a huge fan and deservingly so yes i was this is a bit of an aside but i was just gonna say like one of my like best friends growing up in skating um was um a skater um who he didn't get to compete at the olympics but a skater from mexico who um came to my rink to train and she went to a boarding school nearby um so that she could do that and she would tell me about like similar situations of skating in public sessions. And when mm. our rink would get crowded with like 20 plus people on one session, um, mm. she was kind of the only one who wasn't complaining because she had always skated in public sessions, mm-hmm. you know, like growing mm. up. And um, it was such like, a, I don't know, such like a radical experience for her to have that like protected ice that she was without a doubt like, the hardest worker that I knew there and she like really inspired me so mm-hmm. I just she didn't get to have like necessarily perhaps her ha- happy ending in the sport but she still coaches in Mexico and mm. um, is hopefully contributing to some of that same change you mentioned Kathy which yeah. I think is great. That's I awesome. also just want to add that I think like when you don't really have as much ice time you kind of have to think of creative solutions and I think one thing that I'd read that Donovan did during COVID when all the rinks are closed was he like bought a harness at mm-hmm. home and he like I think he installed it at home or like got someone to help him with it at home where he would just like practice his jumps off wow. ice and he actually credits a lot of his like quad training to practicing that uh, mm-hmm. rotation off the ice that's super so. cool wow that's awesome that's just dedication man well that is a lot to talk about about the men's already. So, Emma, Sammy, what are your top pick of this event? Or what um, is your top pick of this event? Yeah. I can't do grammar. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I think my top pick of the event, uh, I might I might be stealing it from someone, <laughs> but <laughs> I will just have to say like that Yuma's free was my moment. He had a good bit to live up to because his name is now kind of known. Um, and it's just that beginning for him. And so to be able to really like put down a great skate in the long and be such a confident silver, I just love the moment with his dad <laughs> um, and yes. his dad like being so happy. <laughs> his dad like in shock, like more in shock than than Yuma was. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, really? That's the was score? Like, That's the score? Over 200? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay Sam you're not stealing it from me this time okay okay go okay. ahead I would say that my uh favorite skate of the event was actually one we didn't mention uh it was Jun Wan Cha's short program mm. uh, I think when I think of the Olympics I always think of iconic skates like Yuzu's 2014 short program yes. mm. Yuna's uh 2010 long program and I think Jun Wan Cha's short program kind of gave me that sort of same like Olympic moment um, just because I really, really love his music, his outfit, he landed everything cleanly. And the choreography portion, the beginning, where he does this like extension of his arm on the music, I think that that was just done very well. I need to rewatch that. I don't think I noticed all those fine details. What about you, Kathy? Oh, uh, it's so hard. I feel like I always make you guys go first because I don't know <laughs> which one is mine. I would honestly say it was Donovan for me just because I feel like skating is already such a hard sport when you add all these other challenges when it's the resources the money the situation Mm -hmm. into it I think that's what makes those Olympic stories so powerful and inspires people from all corners of the world to try something like a figure skating that is largely 
inaccessible, which we need to change. But yeah. I just think that yeah. having him be the face of that is just so amazing, so brave, so great for him. Um, and honestly, I think, like, even though, you know, like, his point value was nowhere near the men in the top 10, I think his Olympic moment was really the moment for me. Amazingly said. Beautifully put. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I probably, like, said the same shit, like... <laughs> <laughs> no. multiple times but anyways all right enough rambling all right that's a wrap for today's episode of what happened at on the in the element figure skating show thank you so much for tuning in this week leave us a comment down below on your opinions and thoughts because if you are a figure skating fan you are definitely opinionated be sure to subscribe we are available on youtube if you want to get some snazzy visuals and spotify if you want to listen to our crackly voices thank you again and until next time, stay edgy.